But we're going to shift now and talk about the financial state of our field. Um, meanwhile, we will be keeping the diversity frame present um, because you'll see that when it comes to revenue streams and points of community engagement, diversity is just as essential for financial health, especially in challenging times. So last year, Teresa and I shared important highlights from TCG's Theater Facts 2010, our annual field report based on the fiscal survey. And due to the overwhelming clamor for more of the Teresa and Kevin show, <laughs> we're back to do it again. And I'm happy to say we have some cautiously good news. First, we want to thank the 179 theaters that completed the fiscal survey this year. Um, theater Facts 2011 is a report available to everyone, but only the theaters that participate in the fiscal survey have direct access to all of the data and the ability to generate customized reports. It's really been a helpful tool for me over the years, and we want to thank all of you here today who participated in the fiscal survey. We know it takes a wee bit of time but the quality of this research is only possible because you take the time, so thank you. Last year we made a similar plea and we saw an increase in participation. So this year, do we dare shoot for 200 participating theaters? I think we dare. <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think, we, <laughs> I think we do too. So if you're a theater that hasn't participated in the fiscal survey, please make time to do so. And if you need any assistance filling it out, Chris Schuff, who's our Director of Management Programs. Chris, where are you? Raise your hand. Um, and Alana Rose. Alana, are you here? Alana Rose here. Um, they are willing to help you out. And, they, and also, if you're a theater that's taken the survey and find it useful, please spread the word and get your colleagues to participate. And the word of Theater Facts 2011 might very well be... However tentative, cautious, and conditional... Recovery. The possibility of recovery. So let's begin with the universe. <laughs> Theater Facts 2011 includes the universe, which is 1,876 not-for-profit theaters, the profiled theaters, which is the 179 theaters that participated in the 2011 survey, the trend theaters, which are 113 theaters that completed the fiscal survey in each of the past five years. We also have Taking Your Fiscal Pause 2012, which is 206 theaters that responded this fall to a 10-minute snapshot survey of their current fiscal health. So theater facts is a whole lot of data. So today we're going to focus on those 113 trend theaters that completed the survey in each of the past five years. We'll look at those five-year trends as well as one-year trends from 2011 and sometimes reference that 2012 snapshot survey to get a sense of the current picture. But before we take that closer look, let's take a moment to recognize the scope of our theater universe. In 2011, theaters provided 14,600 productions with 177,000 individual performances for 34 million audience members, which by the way is up from 31 million in 2010. Yes. Theaters also employed more people in 2011, 78,500 artists, 36,000 production and technical workers, and 15,500 administrators, contributing nearly 1.94 billion to the U.S. economy. Yes. Now, while we must note that the universe is not the exact same set of theaters year to year, our trend theaters, those member theaters that have responded to the fiscal survey each year since 2007, also reveal a rise in overall attendance of 2.5% from 2010 to 2011. Unfortunately, those trend theaters show a 4% overall decline since 2007. However, the bump in attendance this past year could be a sign that the tentative economic recovery is beginning to bear fruit. The 2012 snapshot survey supports that possibility with nearly three quarters of respondents reporting similar or higher than expected overall paid attendance. There's also fruit to be found in the branches of CUNA the change in unrestricted net assets. In 2011, 58% of the trend theaters reported a positive CUNA, the second straight year well over 50%, bouncing back from a five-year low of 40% in 2009. There are a number of trends driving this po positive shift in CUNA. Let's start with ticket sales. First, the bad news. The past five years have seen decreases of 1% in total number of single tickets sold, 16% in the average number of subscription tickets sold, and 4% in overall attendance. 
However, in 2011, those downward trends started pointing in the right direction with the number of subscription tickets sold holding steady, a 5% increase from 2010 in total number of single tickets sold, and a 2.5% rise in overall attendance. 2011 also saw a rise in ticket income, with single ticket income leading the way, rising 7% in the past year and 13% over the past five. This increase is linked to a rise in single ticket prices of 5% in the last year and 7% over the past five. The 2012 snapshot survey also saw nearly three quarters of respondents reporting ticket income equal to or greater than expected. Last year we shared with you the rise in dynamic pricing which for many theaters has become standard practice. While many theaters found success with dynamic pricing, particularly with a hit show, others voiced concern about accessibility and inclusion. When we reported last year that ticket prices were up, but attendance was down, a forum attendee remarked, well, that sounds like a recipe for extinction. <laughs> However, this year, with both attendance and ticket income on the rise, a more nuanced picture may be emerging, with some theaters noting that dynamic pricing allows them to be more inclusive by keeping ticket prices accessible for off-peak performances. But the real surprise is that the report of the death of subscriptions may have been greatly exaggerated. <laughs> While the average number of individual subscribers did fall 17% over the past five years, subscriptions were at their highest rate of renewal in the past five years in 2011 at 75%. The one-year change shows subscription income, tickets, and the number of subscribers holding steady or falling only slightly. While there is an undeniable long-term downward trend, subscriptions still remain the second highest income generator for theaters, and many theaters are reporting renewed interest in subscription. Theaters are also reporting an increasing interest in process, with attendance at staged readings and workshops rising 16% in the past year and 81% over the past five. Though these events make up a smaller percentage of overall attendance, the question still arises, what could be driving this rapid increase? Now it's time for a quick TCG infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> the hunger for deeper audience engagement will take center stage at our audience revolution convening in February 2013 in Philadelphia. You should have already received an invite to participate in this convening, and you'll soon be emailed a survey regarding your, your own audience engagement practices. Please respond to this survey and help us build on the rising interest in audience and community engagement. Now, back to our original <laughs> program. <laughs> <laughs> While the attendance numbers are encouraging, they alone cannot explain the 8% explain the increase in earned income in the last year. Over the past five years, the field saw a 39% increase in booked-in event income and a 46% increase in rental income. And never underestimate the power of a well-stocked bar. Con <laughs> concession income jumped 18% from 2010 to 2011 and 15% since 2007. Theaters are also working together more, perhaps inspired by meetings that occur at those well-stocked bars. <laughs> Five-year growth in co-production and enhancement fund income surpassed inflation by 25% and reached its highest level in 2011. The two-year trend of positive CUNA is also driven by something outside the theater, the stock market's ongoing, if uncertain, recovery. Average capital gains from investment assets rebounded 163 percent from 2010 to reach their five-year peak in 2011. This was especially important since endowment earnings and transfers fell 14 percent from 2010 and 39 percent from 2007's peak. Still, both capital gains and endowment earnings have made major recoveries from those dark days of 2008 and 9. And while we can't pretend we're out of the woods, we must also entertain the possibility that our direction has shifted. A year ago, we stood here and spoke of glimmers of hope in an age of austerity. Those glimmers have grown, and not just on the earned income front. A year ago, I stood here and read a grim list of declining contributed income <laughs> across the board. Individual, trustee, corporate, federal, city, county, and foundation all declined in 2010. But 2011? Contributed income increased by 26% in 2011 and by 14% over the past five years. The greatest support came from individual and trustee contributions, which increased, all right, yeah, give it up. <laughs> Sorry. Which increased 55% from 2010 and 30% over five years. Now this is important. 
Trustees really stepped up in 2011 with the average trustee gift climbing from a low of $11,000 in 2010 to a high of $17,100 in 2011. Total trustee donations jumped from $38 million in 2010 to a five-year high of $52 million in 2011. <laughs> Since we're in a room with so many trustees, I would really like to take a moment to applaud that essential support and leadership. Again, again, again. <laughs> Non-trustee individual donations also increased, driven perhaps by a rise in capital campaign contributions. We'll come back to that. Giving reached a five-year high average gift of $530, though fewer individual donors contributed. Just a reminder real quick that when you participate in the fiscal survey, you can actually benchmark your own financials against whatever specific data sets that you want. Here endeth the plug. <laughs> The rise in trustee and individual giving may be linked to the rise in fundraising event income. While these events are certainly a lot of work, their increase may support the idea that audiences and donors are hungry for deeper engagement and more high-touch events, as we saw with the rise in stage readings and engagement events. Foundations also bounced back in 2011 and remain the second biggest source of contributed income, increasing 22% in the past year, though it's still down 7% over the past five. Corporate support increased 22% in the past year, though we're still down 20% from 2007. This rise in contributed income from all sources may continue in 2012, with a majority of snapshot survey respondents reporting increased contributed income across the board. It's also worth noting that while in-kind donations from individuals, corporations, and sheltering organizations showed a small one-year decline in 2011, over the past five, they grew by 25%. As with the rise in co-productions, theaters are finding sustainability in partnerships. With this positive but conditional growth in both earned and contributed sources, total income increased 16% in the past year and 3% over the past five. This is a different tune than last year where we saw total income growth falling short of inflation. However, you may have heard two troubling words making a comeback in the news lately, fiscal cliff. <laughs> this combination of expiring tax cuts and automatic spending cuts will surely affect theaters. What's more, both the charitable deduction and the IRA charitable rollover are at immediate risk. The Senate is including legislation called the Peace Limitation, which would place limits on all itemized deductions, including charitable deductions. While some have called the provision a haircut, others believe it may reduce tax deductions by as much as 20% of their total value. Also at risk are the funding levels for the National Endowment for the Arts and the Arts and Education Program at the U.S. Department of Education. As our Congress attempts to avoid pulling at Thelma and Louise, now is the time to remind them of the intrinsic and economic value of the arts in fostering vibrant communities. We encourage you to write a letter congratulating your new and returning members of Congress that testifies to the importance of theater in your community. We can make a difference in Washington, but we need active participation in arts advocacy from everyone in the field. Thankfully, the size of our field is growing. The increase in income supported 8% more of expenses in 2011 from 2010, which leads us to particularly happy news. Theaters added 10% more employees to their payroll in the past year, reaching a five-year high in 2011. After a painful round of belt tightening in 2009 and 2010, there were increases in all but one expense category, physical production, in 2011. The 2012 snapshot survey implies these increases may continue, with a majority of respondents planning to increase their budgets in the ne next fiscal year. Now, after hearing all of this good news, qualified conditional good news, <laughs> you might be wondering, when do I get to feel that good news? Well, it's hard to feel that good news when you're struggling to meet day-to-day -day operational costs. Though 2011 saw some improvement, theaters continue to face challenges with working capital. Theaters have experienced negative working capital since 2007, and those numbers nosedived in 2009 and 10, more than doubling the aggregate negative working capital. Let's look at it another way. 
The working capital ratio is the proportion of unrestricted resources available to meet operating expenses. Theater Facts Financial Consulting Service, Cool Spring Analytics, recommends a working capital ratio benchmark of 25%, or three months of your budgeted expenses in available cash. What was the average, what was the average ratio in 2011? While cash flow for day-to-day -day operations took a major hit in the past five years, it is at least now flowing in the right direction, up 11% from the five-year low of last year. And if you are a theater struggling with working capital, you're not alone. In the past five years, there have never been more than 12 theaters who met that benchmark of 25%. In the 2012 snapshot survey, 40% of theaters reported having cash flow issues. Positive working capital not only helps with that day-to-day -day cash flow, but can also help theaters in invest in the future through ideas, infrastructure, and innovation. And, through the working capital, and though the working capital numbers remain daunting, they also reveal a significant investment in infrastructure. A sustained growth in capital campaigns has led to new and improved facilities, as well as 27% rise in fixed assets over the past five years. 36% of trend theaters were involved in some kind of capital campaign in 2011, a five-year high. So what can we take away from all this research? We know that these positive trends have not erased the losses of the past five years. Here on the East Coast, we're dealing with our own recovery from the devastation of Hurricane Sandy, and we know many theaters across our country feel a long way from all right. We also know that those boom times may have been inherently unstable, and 2007 isn't a place we'd want to return to, even if we could. However, these takeaways are more than just silver linings. Two straight years of positive CUNA for more than half of our theaters. A one-year rise in attendance and ticket income. Theaters diversifying and strengthening their earned income revenue streams. Rebounding contributed income streams across the board. Working capital remains a major concern, but it is moving in the right direction. Our field may not be recovered, but at the very least, this looks like an opportunity for recovery if we can seize it together. Our task now is to build on the momentum, and as we strengthen the fiscal health of our organizations, remember that diversity in revenue streams, both earned and contributed, is essential not only to the challenging times, but as we move from sustaining to thriving. The rapid rise in engagement events suggests that a diversity in our points of community contact may also, also be increasingly essential, a theme we'll explore next February in our audience revolution convening in Philadelphia. Uh, as we now return to considering diversity in the context of our human resources, it's useful to remember that these principles are rooted in our fiscal and programmatic health as well.